Welcome, travelers. Welcome once again to the Bible study BMX Flatland Learning Stream, where I guess you get to watch the failures happen um, and the frustrations as well. But overall, it's been very rewarding. Um, I think it has been. It's just it's just something about just grinding for a trick and you just end up landing it. Just, uh, just motivating for some reason. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're riding a 15 by 15 square foot area. Um, hopefully, I'd like to think that potentially m maybe some seeds of faith could be sown in any degree, even the subtlest little seed of faith. And potentially, maybe, we could use these skills and attributes that we've, uh, we learn to try and give glory to God in any way, to the, to the Lord of Lord and King of Kings, the Lord Jesus Christ. And anyway, we'll get into the Bible study. And you know what? I haven't even thought of the verse. Normally, actually, I actually have, didn't even look up the verse because normally I was like, kind of like looking up the verse and then <clears throat> just so I can have something. Let's just see. Let's see here. Let's just go to the random Bible verse generator right now. Okay, let's see. Uh, what verses we get? What ver oh, you know what? <clears throat> that actually makes me think. We did used to do like the the lock cast thing, but yeah, it's basically the same thing, kind of. Um, let's see here. Oh, you know what? There's actually that one. That one. Now I remember it. We we I put it up on the on the trade chat in the game last night it was the first fruits of the creature that we should be like a first fruits that we should it's like james uh 116 or something that we should be a kind of first fruits kind of wanted to read a commentary oh i was actually pretty close is it did i say 18 or did i say 16 anyway let's see here of his own will he will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. I think that one's just very interesting to think about, right? <clears throat> the first fruits of his creatures. Let's open up into James. Generally, when I think of James, I always think of like wisdom, right? Wisdom, because in the first, in the, actually the first one, it says, seek, uh, we are to ask God for wisdom, and he d gives generously to all. And then also about the tongue. Um, and what's weird is I've actually heard this from multiple uh, pastors, and they've said that some people akin the letter of James to the New Testament to to almost like a New Testament proverb. So interesting, huh? Because I I mean I think I know understand why. There's so many things in James that, and there's a lot of things, a lot of combos you can actually find um, within proverbs as well. Okay, let's see here. James 118, huh? Okay, let's see here. For every every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his characters. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls." Be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. That's weird. Actually, I haven't really thought of it. Deceiving yourself. That's kind of strange that he says that, right? Be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So does that mean that... What does James mean right there? Is he saying that if we, be, if we do not become doers of the word, and we only hear the word, 
that we can get deceived more easily or something like that. I never really like heard anybody really say that like that. It's kind of strange. I, I might be getting that wrong, so take that with a grain of salt. But I, I mean, I read it right there. So, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his at his natural face in a mirror, for he looks at himself and goes away, and at once forgets what he is was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. See, this one always trips me out, and that was the end of chapter one, but the, the beginning of chapter two confuses me as well. My brother, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. What does that mean, huh? My brother, show no partiality. Is that like a... Uh, is that favoritism? I think in some translation that's favoritism, right? But it's just so strange because I guess in our modern society, there's so many aspects to that, right? And it's very hard sometimes to think about that. Anyway, what we were going to go into is we were actually going to go into 118. I wanted to read a couple of verses in the beginning to kind of see if we can get a little deeper into it. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. It's very interesting. I'm gonna read. Let's read up some commentaries on it now. Maybe we could go into some like verses on fruit, right? Um, James one eighteen. I'm actually see. It's actually kind of hard. I'm wondering before we get into the commentaries, right? Before we even look at the commentaries, I'm wondering what com what combos the commentators are going to go into. So I'm thinking it says first fruits, right? What verses can you think of right now thinking about that, right? We are to be kind of like a first fruit. Maybe, okay, so maybe here's the thing, right? So if we think about the parable of the sower, right? We think about the parable of the sower, the kingdom is like the, the kingdom is like people that go out that sow seed out in the field. What is the seed? The seed is the word of God. So if we are, and here's the thing is I have, now this is from other, denom, well, other, many different denominations have said this because it's kind of like an overarching theme. So the thing is, is that there's different types of soils, right? And ultimately we are to grow, to somehow grow and almost end up becoming like trees, right? And when we think about fruit, right? Think about how a fruit plant is, right? So... You know how like a little tree will grow up and it's kind of like it only has like two leaves? Well, that can't produce fruit, right? It's, it's still just a little like plant, right? And it's only until we have, I guess, gotten, let the word continue to grow in us, in our soil, in our own minds, right? And hearts. That eventually we will, the word will grow in us so much, God's word that we will ultimately start bearing fruit, right? And it's weird because if you think about fruit and you think about the seeds, I think there's something correlated with that. I think fruit is the only thing that produces seeds. So if we are to be, if we are to bear fruit, like, uh, what's that one verse? It's like John, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, herein is my Father glorified. Herein is my my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Okay, so John fifteen eight says, Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples, right? And I guess there's different types of fruit because there's also the fruit of the Spirit, right? There's fruit of the spirit of like being patience, long-suffering, uh, like forbearance, 
Um, I think that's actually long suffering. Those two words are put together. Um, love, kindness. Uh, I honestly, I need to rem I literally, I need to remember. I don't know if that's all of them. I think there's a couple I'm missing. Maybe like three or four I'm missing actually. Um, but those are also fruits, right? And sometimes I wonder. It's also I wonder if fruits are also in this in the realm of the Great Commission, right? Because if we think about the Great Commission where Jesus says, go out and proclaim the gospel to all of the creatures, right? And how Jesus likens the seed to the word and we are to bear fruits and fruit bears seeds and seeds are the word and we are to go out there and sow seeds because if we were to seek first the kingdom, right? Maybe I'm getting all this wrong, but I think it kind of makes sense to me. It might not make sense to people that are, I don't know. It makes sense to me, right? I don't know if it might be wrong, so take it with a grain of salt. But in terms of all these Bible studies, I think we're having this kind of over, overarching thing of, you know, in a simple term, right? We just got to think of a, you know, us as plants, little plants, and we grow into trees, and hopefully we can bear fruit and uh, and continue to eventually hopefully save people's souls, right? To Because if we are called to be wise like in what james says in james 1 we are to ask god for wisdom and then now i don't know this combo i'm gonna have to look it up but it's that it's that it's that proverb that we always go into right and it says where is it the fruit of the right oh here's another one i forgot it said fruit the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and whoever captures souls is wise man i actually i literally did not plan that i forgot that that said that so that's actually another verse that says fruit the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and whoever captures souls is wise so do you think that that is actually another fruit because some people because i actually have heard people say some believers have said well fruit it only means the fruit of the spirit that's all that means that you know we don't you know but then i kind of go well what about this you know what about these verses right here right it's like some of these verses and thinking about fruit and they bear seeds and they sow seeds and then, you know, stuff like that. Very interesting, right? And it's strange because it says, and whoever captures souls is wise, right? What happens if, what happens if you were doing the opposite? Can you be doing the opposite? That's what I'm actually wondering. And I haven't heard any pastors really mention this with this verse in particularly, right? So it says, whoever captures souls is wise. So what happens if you're not capturing souls? What happens if you're actually repelling souls away? Like more than you're capturing, right? I'm wondering if that is something, and I guess that goes into the into the realm of like trying to be tactful about what we do, um, something like that, right? Because it also says something about us being persuasive, right? Let's see here, something about being persuasive in us. Let's see here, where is it? Oh yeah, here we go. The heart of the wise, here's another one about being wise, makes his speech judicious and adds persuasiveness to his lips. Right? Gracious words are like a honeycomb and sweetness to the soul and health to the body. And this is actually another good one. This one isn't really within it, but I'm just going to read it because uh, for some odd reason I don't have it underlined. So I'm going to read it right now. I do have it underlined, I just don't have it underlined with green. It says... Whoever gives thought to the word will discover good and blesses he who trusts in the Lord. Oh, wait, here's another one about being wise. Oh, I forgot. Let's underline this one. I'll have this one underlined. The wise of heart is called to discerning and sweetness of speech increases persuasiveness. So sweetness of speech, right? Increases persuasiveness. And then there's... It, that's so strange. Look, in the same, in, in Proverbs 16, verse 20 and 23, literally, he put the word persuasiveness two times, right? And we are to be of sweetness of speech. That's so very interesting to think about. It's strange that he would mention that two times because, unfortunately, you know, I bring this up every time I read this, but sometimes, like, it's strange because I've been hearing a lot of people and they go, 
It's strange. I hear a lot. I've been here. I've been reading and hearing this a lot lately. And they go, you know what? I don't like the church hurt me or something like that. Or these other believers hurt me. And now I don't want to believe anymore and stuff like that. And I just go, man, that's so like, it's so strange that like believers would kind of do that. Cause shouldn't we be building people up and trying to water them, water them to grow even more. Right. Instead of trying to cut them down. And it's so strange to think about. Imagine you being a believer and you cutting someone else's faith down to the point they don't want to believe anymore. That is a really harsh thing to think about, right? And it's just, it, sometimes it makes me wonder about sometimes these verses, right? Because we are called, there's so many things in, our, in, in the scriptures, you know, even in James, that talk about our tongue, right? And this is kind of going into that very thing about talking about the tongue, right? But anyway, we've kind of diverted. I've diverted a lot. I've covered these passages a lot. That's why I comboed them into it. But that's kind of me kind of like thinking about trying to be the first fruits. Like I don't really know. I don't know if that was a very good combo, but I tried it. Okay. That's the one. That's what came up in my mind. I don't know what other people's combos. That's actually the other weird thing. I'm, sometimes I'm curious. Like it's interesting hearing like somebody, especially like some pastors, right? Because some pastors, they go out and they don't really write anything down. They're just like, boom, they're just winging it. Well, maybe they've rehearsed it, right? But sometimes there's just those pastors that are just winging it, bro. They're just walking around. They're not even looking at a phone or anything. They're not even looking at a tablet. They're not in front of a pulpit. They're just walking around just like, blah, 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 blah. And they're just like, dude, you just had that in your mind, huh? Sometimes I wonder, like hearing other believers, and if we were to hear what... So say we take a verse, right? We take a verse... And without them looking at anything, what other verses or what combos could they find? Or what, what things that does that make them think about, right? I think that's, that would be interesting to like observe. Because that's a, after reading so many of these commentaries, that's something that I've observed now. Every commentator sometimes, well, sometimes we, everybody does find similar combos. But it's interesting when we go into commentaries and that, that commentator comboed into something that I was like, what in the world, bro? You comboed it into that verse? Bro, like, I wouldn't even have thought of that. I think the other, I think what's really hard to do is sometimes is, like, comboing it into, like, some of the Old Testament verses, right? Especially, like, that stuff's definitely a lot, a lot harder um, for me to do. Okay, let's see here. Um, James 118 Commentary. I'm so curious now what they're going to say. I think they're probably going to say something like, I already, mean, I already kind of tried to think about it, right? But I'm also thinking about it in terms of like, uh, let's see here. I mean, I guess maybe I can even think about it as like, you know, like I did read something in the Life Application Bible, right? And the Life Application Bible said something about um, how God uses people, right? And sometimes God uses people like, say, the prophets or um, uh, uh, these main characters in the scriptures, right? And sometimes God puts, pe puts these people in very, very confusing and strange circumstances, right? Like very wild circumstances at times, right? In order for God to somehow use them. There's actually something in the Life Application Bible saying... I, I remember reading something in the commentary about like prophets or something in the Life Application Bible, Study Bible, and it said something along the lines of one of the reason, or maybe one of the reasons, something like that, um, that, that God isolated some of these prophets, made them live out in the wilderness, um, made them live these extremely uh, unorthodox lives compared to what they were going through, is that sometimes God has to isolate you for you to understand that these things are from God, right? Instead of like being, you know, I guess part of other, you know, if you were conformed to a whole bunch of other things, you might get confused being like, well, is that from God or is that from God or what's going on over here? Now I'm confused. This is what the life, now I'm butchering the words. I don't know, so there's somewhere in the life application Bible that said something like that, right? And then sometimes it makes me wonder, do you think that almost goes along with James 1, 18, maybe? Kind of being like a first fruit, like maybe sometimes it makes me think of like God maybe, you know, maybe wanting to 
make you a little bit more aware of its presence in maybe unorthodox ways that would maybe make you, you know, maybe him separating you. Maybe not separating, but, you know, kind of like maybe showing you something to where it's like, it, you know, I don't know. I'm confused now. Let's read a commentary. <laughs> Let's see what the commentary is saying now because I'm, I don't know. That was my, okay, that was my take on it, right? So, <laughs> I probably didn't do a very good job, so please take everything I just said right there with a grain of salt, but I tried, okay? Okay, James 118, uh, commentary. Now I'm curious, what are they going to say? What combos are they going to bring up? <laughs> okay, let's see here. I need to turn down the brightness up in here. Let's see. Here. Let's read the Ellicott's commentary. Very first one, it's on Bible Hub. Um, of his own will beget us with the word of truth. Okay, well, just even reading that, it makes me think of um, where Jesus says he is the way, that, the way, the truth, and the life, right? Okay, there is a greater witness to God's goodness than that which is written upon the dome of heaven. Even the regeneration of man as the old creation was by the word. John 1.3, John 1.10. The new is by him also. The logos, the word of truth, and that by means of his everlasting gospel, delivered in the power of the Holy Ghost. So tenderly is this declared that a maternal phrase is used. God brought us forth in the new birth and through a woman may forget the son of her womb isaiah forty nine, fifteen. wow i got comboed in isaiah forty nine, fifteen. i would have i probably that's a that's a combo i did not even think about it didn't even cross my mind yet will he never leave nor forsake hebrews thirteen five, that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creatures and why this mercy and loving kindness for our own sakes or for others and for his surely the latter and it is the first fruit be holy the lump is also holy what does that mean romans eleven sixteen. 16. that's weird he brought up he comboed into romans eleven sixteen. let's, let's read romans eleven sixteen. for it is the first fruit is holy the lump is also holy and is the root is holy, so are the branches. That's strange, right? It also kind of reminds me, huh, that's weird. It also kind of reminds me, there's actually this proverb that says uh, something about um, portion out something to the Lord or something like that. Ah, oh, it's like whatever your produce, portion it out to the Lord. What is that? Uh, there's some verse that says something like that, but... um. Kind of reminds me of that. That's an interesting one, man. Huh. Okay. We know who the firstborn of every creature, Colossians 1.15. The first begotten of the dead, Revelations 1.5. Nay, the beginning of the creation of God, Revelations 3.14. And we are created in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2.10. Became new in him, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Galatians 6.15 made the first fruits of his redemption and moreover it would seem we are the sign of the deliverance promised to the brute creation which waiteth for the manifestations of the sons of god romans 8 19 romans 8 21 the longing for a future perfection is shared by all created beings upon earth and their discontent at present imperfection points to another state freed from evil Romans 8:18 8, through 22 The creature was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him who hath subjected the same hope who is who hath subjected the same in hope Romans 8:20 And the fruition of this hope is foreshadowed in the words above the very struggles it has been well observed by Dean Howson which all animated beings make against pain and death show that pain and death are not part of the proper laws of their nature but rather a bondage imposed upon them from without thus every, every groan and fear is an unconscious prophecy of liberation from the power of evil that was a very strange 
I don't even understand what that guy even was really talking about there, but I don't even know where this this commentary is confusing to me. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I mean, I understand, like, the first truths, like, I guess, like, Christ almost, like, reborning, re, we getting reborn and Christ building us up. Is that ultimately what he's going into? I mean, that's what it kind of sounds like, right? The, the, the creature itself also shall be delivered is the plain assertion of St. Paul, Romans 8.21. But comparing his with that of St. James, we must conclude that they point to all nature animated and inanim inanimated as well. We look for new heavens and new earth where when dwelleth righteousness. 2 Peter 3.13, and there shall be no more death and no more pain. Revelations 21.4, all creation groans and travails, O thou, O Lord, shalt hear its groan for of man and all of creation thou art like our lord alone wow that was man, that, was brutal. Uh, that commentary i'm not even gonna lie that was like uh kind of confusing right sometimes like i read some of these commentaries and i go how do you guys even like write like i don't i i, I honestly just don't think i would ever be able like some of these combos they get into i'm like man you guys like you guys find some very interesting con like literally he brought up probably all these verses that I never even thought of. I so I guess, I guess it just goes to show like how far off I might have even been but I mean but the thing is I'm wondering what other if other believers were to listen to me right even like big pass or something did I get anywhere close of what, anything of what <laughs> of what we were trying to get into right or did I just totally like miss the mark or something right should we read McLaren's oh my goodness wow holy Toledo bro what in the world, bro? McLaren wrote a freaking... Dude, he wrote a book for this one. Are you kidding me, bro? For this one verse. I had a hard time even finding a co one combo for it, dude. This dude wrote a book for it. <laughs> Let's read it. Now I'm curious. Like, what, what in the world, bro? Like, this dude wrote so much for this one verse. Holy moly. Okay, well, let's learn some stuff. Man, this is McLaren's exposition. It just, this is the head bold first fruits of his creatures. Now we're going to get into the, the text. I can't believe this dude wrote. See, it always trips me out because there's some verses, right? We look up the commentators for some verses and like everybody just writes like a paragraph or like a couple sentences. You're like, what in the world? Really? McLaren, you only wrote like a couple, a couple sentences for this, for this verse? And then you hit some verses like this one right here, and you're just like, whoa, bro. I guess I didn't really know that much about it. All right, we're getting into it. This is a long one, so bear bear with me. I'm going to try not to say anything. I'm going to try and... I'm actually going to try not to, like... Let's just read it. Right, let's, just, let's just get into it. James 1.18. According to the Levitical ceremonial, the first sheaf of the new crop accompanied with sacrifice was presented in the temple on the day after the Passover Sabbath. No part of the harvest was permitted to be used for food until after this acknowledgement that all had come from God and belonged to him. A similar law applied to the firstborn of men and of cattle. Both were regarded as in special sense consecrated to and belonging to God. Now, I know I, I was going to try not to make any uh, interjections here, but there is this thing, there is a paladin spawn, it's called consecration. So, I don't know. And it's like this, like, this aura thing, you like, it's like, and it's like the consecration aura. I guess it's maybe meaning set apart or something. That's actually, that's actually the weird thing. I don't know. Anyway. Now, in the New Testament, both these ideas of the firstborn and the first fruits, which run as you see parallel in some important aspects, are transferred to Jesus Christ. He is become the first fruits of them that slept. And it was no mere accidental coincidence that in this character, he rose from the dead on the day on which, according to the law, the sheaf was to be presented to the temple. 
In his case, the ideas attached to the expression are not only that of consecration, but that of being the first of a series, which owes in its existence to him. He makes men the many brethren, of whom he is the firstborn, and he, by the overflowing power of his life, raises from the dead the whole harvest of which he is the first fruits. That is also the case, right? That's very interesting. Then that which Jesus Christ is primarily and originally, all those who love him and trust him are secondarily and by der derivation. What does that mean? Deriv derivation. Wait, let me look at that word. Derivation. Derivation. Uh, derivation. Okay, that's what it meant. Derivation. Okay, I was like, I've never, I've actually never read that word before. Derivation. So it's a, it's a. Let's look up the con Let's look up the definition of that. Derivation definition. The obtaining or developing of something from a source or origin. Something that originates from something else. Okay, so it's derived. So like we are to be derived from the first fruit of Jesus Christ because he was the first fruit and we are derived from that. So we are to be almost kind of like that, right? I think. Thus, both these phrases are further transferred in the New Testament to Christian people. They are the first fruits unto God and the Lamb. Or as my text here or as my text has it here, with a qualifying word, a kind a first fruits, which expresses at once a metaphor and the de derivative. I keep messing up that word. Derivative, derivation of the character. They are also the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. So then. This text, we have contained some great ideas as to God's purpose in drawing us to himself. And I want you to look at these for a more moment or two. First, then, God's purpose for Christians is that they should be consecrated to him. The sheaf was presented before God in the symbolical ceremonial as an acknowledge acknowledgement of his ownership of it and of all the wide waving harvest. It thereby became his in a special sense in like manner. The purpose of God in bestowing on us the wondrous gifts of a regeneration and new life by the word is that we should be his, yielding to him the life which he gives and all that we are in thankful recognition and joyful consecration. We hear a great deal about consecration in these days. Let us understand what consecration means. There is an inward and outward aspect of it. In the inward aspect, it means an entire devotion of myself down to the very roots of my being, to God as Lord and owner. Oh, you know what? That's actually very interesting. It's interesting because if you even think of, if you even like look at the paladin spell, it almost like kind of, now it kind of makes sense why it looks like that. Man, that's so strange to think about. It's so strange that like I used that spell so many times that I don't even really, I didn't really even know what it meant. It's so odd, right? And, and see, now I'm wondering, right? Do you think that that is a subtle seed of faith that can get planted into people, right? You know, even if, you know, I'm wondering, like, how small of a seed of faith can be planted into people, right? Do you think God could somehow use these subtle seeds, right? Even the paladin class, right? You know how I started off, oh, they used the word consecration, consecrate, right? That's a paladin spell. I don't, I honestly didn't really even know what consecration meant. I just, I, it's weird that I've heard that I've, li I've literally seen that word probably thousands of times now, and I didn't even know what it meant. And then it's just, and then it goes into it, and I'm just like, what in the world? They're going into that? It's like, I've seen that word so many times, and it's just strange, right? I don't know, is that a subtle seed of 
And is that a little seed of faith? I don't know, right? I don't know. I guess that's for everybody else's. I guess that, I guess it's up to God of how he waters things, right? Anyway, let's get back to commentary. Man's natural tendency is to make himself his own center, to live for self and by self. And the whole purpose of the gospel is to decentralize him and to give him a new center, even God for whom and by whom and with whom and in whom the Christian man is destined by this very calling to live. Man, he just ends it right there, to live, right? I mean, I guess it makes me think of the whole aspect of when Jesus Christ says, he is the way, the truth, and the what? The life, right? He wants us to have life. Like, and he wants us to have life to the fullest. Isn't that crazy, right? I, it's just so, it's so trippy to me when I hear people, oh, you know, Christianity is like boring, boring and stuff, man. Like, bro, there's like some, there's some, I feel like there's so many like aspects of Christianity where like, maybe the church doesn't really cover, right? Or maybe they don't want to talk about it and stuff like that, right? But it's it's very interesting. Is that a verse? Let me see if that's a verse. Uh, he wants us to have life to the fullest. Is that a verse? Is that not a verse? Or is that just something that pastors say? Let's see here. Okay, here we go. It is a verse. The thief come only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Man, it's so gnarly, right? It's so strange to think about that. That the Lord of Lord, the King of Kings, he wants us to live life to the fullest, right? It's just such a, it's so weird. And then it's so weird that you, that I'll hear, you know, oh, Christianity is like born, all this stuff. And I just go, man, but doesn't like the Lord just want us to live, doesn't he want us to live to the fullest, right? And sometimes it kind of like plants this, sometimes that, when I hear, sometimes you got to be careful what other people, you know, sometimes it plants a subtle seed of doubt and stuff, right? But we got to think about it. We need to have like zeal. And he wants us to have zeal and fortitude and, and energy and just maybe, you know, I guess take that with a grain of salt, you know, but that's how I see. When I hear the word life, I, th I do not think of boringness. I think of just energy and life. I just think of life. I don't think about slothfulness. I don't think about being bored. When I think about being bored, I almost think about slothfulness, right? Like those two almost kind of go hand. When I think about life, I think about just like zeal and just energy and just, uh, you know, just like, you know, like fortitude. I don't think about being bored when I hear about that. But that's very interesting that he ended that paragraph like that. This, this, this thing's still on? This still is on. Okay. Now, how can an inward devotion and consecration of myself be possible? Only by one way, and that is the way of love that delights to give. The yielding of the human spirit to the divine is only accomplished through the sweet medium of love. Self-surrender is the giving up of self at the, at the bidding of love to him whom my heart cleaves. The will will yield itself. There will be no murmuring. Did he just use, he used the word will will two times. Look, it says the will will yield itself. There will be no murmuring at hard providences. No regrets darkening a whole life and paralyzing duty and binding to blessings by reason of the greatest sorrow which he may have sent. The will will yield in submission. The will will yield in obedience, according to the dreadful metaphor of the founder of the Jesuits when applied to the relations of a man to a but blessed when applied to the relationships to man, of, to God, and of God to man. I shall be his hands like a staff in the hand of a man, only to be used as he desires. Consecration means full surrender, and the fortress of self is in the will. And the way of surrender is the flowery path of love. To take the other metaphor of scripture by which the same idea is expressed the consecration which we owe to God 
as which is his design in all dealings with us in the gospel will be like that of a priestly offering of sacrifice and the sacrifice is ourselves you know when i think about the word sacrifice i know we did a bible study on sacrifice but sometimes when we do, when we did that Bible study on sacrifice, sometimes it just trips me out thinking about that, right? Because you know they went into like how like like Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ sacrificed Himself, and and we are to like bear our own cross and stuff like that, and we are to be like living sacrifices or something like that. And then just like it's just so trippy to think about that, right? And it just really like man, it's just so strange. It's so gnarly to think that. You know, the Lord of Lord, the King of Kings, he sacrificed himself. And it's like, we could at least sacrifice a little bit of something of our lives to try and give glory to God ultimately, right? And I guess that's just the thing. And, I, and it, it makes me wonder, right? It's like, it's so strange to think about that, that he sacrificed everything even to his own life. And then thinking about like, you know, and that's the weird thing. Because sometimes I go, man, maybe I shouldn't be trying to glorify God because it's like causing too much pushback or something like that but then I think about like the whole living aspect thing and it's just like the living sacrifice thing and it just it's so confusing actually so we're gonna have to go into that a little bit more but it's uh I guess ultimately if we're trying to at least trying to glorify God even in the, in the slightest right okay anyway so much for the inward about about the outward all capacities opportunities possessions are to be yielded up to him as utterly as christ has yielded himself to us we are to live for him and work for him and set as our prime object conspicuously and constantly before us see i'm wondering what other believers would think about this right it's strange because i don't really know who is this the mclaren i think this is the mclaren's exposition I'm wondering if, like, many denominations are like, dude, that dude, you should not be reading him. You know, stuff like that. I'm wondering what other people think of, like, other, I'm wondering what every denomination thinks about this commentary right now, right, as we speak. It'd be interesting to see a commentary and then see the comments of every single denomination of what they think about this commentary, right? Because, like, right, I don't know, there's some things and it's like, I think if, if I were to say this to some other believers, they'd be like, nah. You know, like that's not, and I'd be like, well, that's strange because this is on the main, this is on Bible Hub with all the Bible commentaries, right? <laughs> anyway, so that's just a strange thought that I had. So take all this with a grain of salt. Take my words with a grain of salt too when we're reading it. Back to the commentary. Trivialities of daily duty and the commonplaces of recurring tasks. The one thing to glorify God and to please him. Consecration means the utter giving of myself away. In the inmost sanctuary of the Spirit. I like that word, sanctuary of the Spirit. And it means the result devotion of all that I have and all that I am in the outgoings of daily life to His service and to His praise. You know, it just, sometimes when I read some of these, it just makes me think, it just trips me out, man. It really does, because I just go, if we were to really think about this, this last sentence right here, you know, if we were to do everything as to under the Lord, to result all our devo you know, devotion, outgoings of daily life, to his service and all this stuff, you know, it sounds strange, but it kind of reminds me of like in and out right? It's so funny because I've been hearing so many uh, like believers nowadays and they go, oh, well, this company's doing this, they're promoting this, don't go for that company, all these companies and all, and, and here's the weird thing, right? And then I go, well, then what about, like, why, why can't we just be promoting the faith more, right? Because here's the thing is I, don't, I only know, like, okay, so there's in and out uh, in and out Ezekiel Bread, Zero Skateboards. Uh, there's a couple others, right? There's even some VMX brands that do it. But the thing is is that in and out can put a Bible verse hidden in things. It's like, why can't all these other people do it, right? If we're if we think about this, what he just in this in this paragraph that he just wrote, right? That we are to do all we're to give everything, basically, up to Christ, Jesus Christ, and we are to try and glorify him and to praise him and for his service, right? 
you think we could at least like put even just a little cross. Imagine if just everything that you got just had a little cross on it. Like literally, even if it was just like, like a little centimeter cross, like, like, you know, just a little cross just hidden somewhere. Even like, you know, even like on anything, you know, imagine this thing right here. It just had like a little cross somewhere. You'd be like, what in the world? Like, what is that? I mean, even more so, imagine if there was like in and out where it had like a little, a little like, like Revelation 6, 5 through 6. Didn't write the entire thing, but just, just said Rev 6, 5 through 6, just randomly somewhere. See, it's so strange that like in and out can do that. But then like, when we think about this paragraph and then I think about the many believers that I've been seeing lately and they go, well, this company's doing that and that company's promoting that. And, I, and sometimes I go, well, why can't there just be more companies just trying to promote the, the scriptures, right? <laughs> I mean, in and out can do it, right? This just trips me out. So I don't know, but I don't know, dude. That's, that's what trips me out. And I don't know. It's weird. And I honestly, yeah, it, it's sad to say. Actually, there is another company. <laughs> this company right here. <laughs> this is actually the funniest thing. This company with these, the MTG right here, they've actually had some cards with Bible verses on them. That is hilarious. I mean, that was from the 90s, but let's actually see. I'm actually, I'm actually curious now. MTG, what, what, what were the cards of the MTG? Actually, I think I have, I think I did have proxies of them in there. Actually, I do have the proxies in here, I think, right? That's the funniest thing about it. Thought I had the prop. Maybe I don't. Where are they? Oh yeah, like this one. Is this one? Yeah. So check this one out. So it's so funny, right? Like how I brought up like the in and out thing. Like why can't all other companies just do something, right? This one's called Revelation. It has is Ecclesiastes three nineteen. What does this say? Many are in high places and of renown. But mysteries are revealed unto the meek. So strange, right? And it just makes me wonder, right? Like if it just it just trips me out, right? It just trips, especially nowadays, because if you get deeper into the faith now, no, no, you gotta take a lot of things with a grain of salt, right? But um, it's just it's just weird that like you know so many people are saying so many things about companies and all this stuff, and I just and sometimes I just wonder like. Well, then why can't we just, you know, like, why can't we just put more, like, verses or something on things, right? <laughs> I mean, I know it sounds cringy, but, I mean, I think that would, I honestly think that would be cool. Like, I, I think it would be cool. I think it's cool that in and out put the little verse thing hidden. And that's the other weird thing is some people have said, like, well, that's totally not even, like, church or anything, you know, that's... But then it's weird because if you if you read like even this commentary right that we went into, you know many pastors over multiple denominations they've said like, you know we are to give everything to God that God basically provides us everything that we need and we are to somehow glorify God with everything that He's basically loaned us if He owns everything right, and it's just so I wonder sometimes I wonder what God thinks like, like sometimes I wonder what God thinks imagine if God giving you all these things and he's like in the background almost going like okay well how are you going to glorify me with what i just kind of gifted you with or something or just even gave you right and sometimes i wonder oh that's such a trip man just to think about that right and i don't know so and that's in i didn't think that this this i honestly did not think that this guy was going to go this deep into that right anyway are we let's continue this is a long commentary that is what god meant for you and me when he made us christians so that was his design when he sent his son and he thwarts and counterwork him just in the measure in which we still make ourselves of our own center our wills are our own law and our well-being our own aim now remember such consecration is salvation for the opposite thing, the living to self, is damnation and hell and destruction. And whosoever is thus consecrated to God is in process of being saved. The relation between the two ideas is not, and as it often is put, 
that you are to he saved that you may be consecrated, but you are being saved in being consecrated. And by and and the measure in which we have ceased to be devoted to ourselves and be devoted to him is the accurate measure in which we have received the true salvation that is in Jesus Christ. We're still going. That consecration is blessedness. There is no joy of which a human spirit is capable that is lofty, as rare and exquisite, as sweet and lasting as the joy of giving itself away to whom who has given himself for us. And such consecration is true possession of what we give and the only way of really owning ourselves of our possessions. He that loveth himself shall lose himself. And he that gives himself away to God, a weak, sinful man, gets himself back from God, a hero, strong, and a saint. Such consecration, which is the root of all blessedness and the true way of entering into the possession of all possessions, is only possessible in the degree in which we subject ourselves to the influence of the mighty acts which God has done in order to secure it. Our yielding of ourselves to him is the only possible when we are quite sure that he has given himself to us. Our love which melts us and, bow, and bows us in willing, joyful surrender can only be the echo of his love. The pattern is set it, the pattern is set us in the Christ and set us that we may imitate it and we may imitate it in the measure in which we lie exposed to its mighty power. He gave himself for us that he might purchase for himself a people for his possession. My surrender is but the echo of the thunder of his. My surrender is but the flash on the polished mirror which gives back the sunbeam that smites it. I've never heard that word used in a, in a commentary. <laughs> this commentary must be really old because I have never heard a single commentary. I don't even think I've even heard a pastor even say smite. I didn't even think... Smite, I think, is actually a priest spell. and what, That's the most hilarious part. Smite. That, I'll remember that. This is the first commentary that we have read with that word in it. Smite. What does that word even mean? Smite definition. What does this mean? I don't even, I've never looked this up. Be strongly attracted to someone or something. To strike with a firm blow. Okay, let's look. Smite definition. Is, it, is, is there one in the Bible? To smear or defile with a rod. Huh. To strike or hit hard. Interesting. Hmm. A strong hit, I guess. Hmm, where was I? I lost my place. This guy doesn't like take off his paragraphs. He the guy writes some ridiculously long paragraphs. I get lost in them. Like there should be like so you think that there'd be like a little bit of like a like some uh, enter spaces, right? Did I literally just lost where I was at? Okay, we yield ourselves to God when we realize that Christ has given Himself for us. Christian men and women, behold your destiny. God's purpose concerning you is that you might not be your own, because you are brought, you are bought with a price. And measure against that mighty purpose the halting obedience, the reluctant wills, the half and half surrender, which is no surrender at all, which make up the lives of the average Christians among us, and see whether any of us can feel that the divine purpose is accomplished in us, and that we have paid what we owe to our God. Now, I don't know what other denominations would think about that, right? Secondly, my text suggests that God's purpose for Christians is that we should be specimens and beginnings of a great harvest. I can't believe this dude went this far in, man. This is so gnarly, huh? This guy literally, like, he I guess he really liked this verse or something, right? I guess it's a very interesting verse. 
I didn't think it, I honestly did not think it was going to get this deep. I thought it was going to be like a paragraph and I was going, you know, we're going to get into writing, but I guess not. I guess this one's actually very, very, um, there's a lot of lore into this one. You know, let's get back to the commentary. The sheaf was carried into the temple, showed what sun and rain and the sweet sky influences had been able to do on a foot or two of ground, and it prophesied of the acres of golden grain that would one day be garnered in the barns. And so, Christian men and women today, and even more eminently at the time when this letter was written, are meant to be the first small example of a great harvest that is to follow. Now, see, that is the thing. So now he is getting, okay, so he is kind of getting into something that we, I, you know, before we got into the commentaries, I did say something, I think, you know, this is kind of what I, these were my thoughts when I read it, right? And now this guy actually kind of went into it a little bit, but I didn't think about all that other stuff that he brought up. I'm like, man, that's so gnarly to think about all the other stuff he brought up, right? Like, I didn't know. I literally, like, I, that was stuff wasn't even in my mind at the time when I read the verse, right? I kind of just thought about this, right? The design that God had in view of our being Christianized is that we should stand here as specimens of what he means the world to be and as witnesses of what he, by the gospel, is able to make men. If we strip that thought of its metaphor, it just comes to this that if Christianity has been able to take one man, pick him out of the mud and mire of sense and self, and turn him into a partially and increasingly consecrated servant of God, it can do that for anybody. The little sheaf, though there be but a handful of nodding heads in it, is a sure pledge of the harvest of the great prairie yonder. As yet untilled and unsown, which will yet hear like fruit to praise and honor. And that was a that was a very complex pair little sentence that he wrote right there. Okay, how how would oh my goodness it keeps going on, bro. This is like a book, bro. For one verse, this is all the things that he wrote. Can you imagine that? One verse he wrote this much. This is gnarly, bro. Like. Just gnarly lore, dude. But take it with a grain of salt, right? But I think, I mean, it's on one of the main commentary sites, so, but, you know, still, I, I don't know if everything that he said is every, you know, I don't think, I, I don't, I'm, I'm still curious. What does every denomination think about this one, right? I don't know. Right? I think it's pretty interesting. If anything, I'm just, I'm just blown away by the fact that he wrote this much stuff down for this one verse. Literally a verse that's like a sentence. <laughs> it's gnarly. It's crazy. Okay, let's see here. We have all of us one human heart. Whatever may be men's idiosyncrasies, wow, I've never read that word before, or diversities of culture, of character, of condition, of climate, of chronology. What is that word? Is that, oh, that's time, I think. Because I do remember chronomancer. A chronomancer is a person that can control time or something, right? So chronology is time. Study. Study of time, right? I think. They have... Let's actually look that up. Now I'm wondering. Chronology definition. The arrangement of events and dates in order of their occurrence. Chrono I thought the... Oh, yeah, yeah. Chron chronological. Okay. Oh yeah, so this is the study of historical events. Okay, especially the established of of past events or dates. Okay, so that's chronology. Chronology. They have all the same deep primary wants, and the deepest of them is deepest of them all is concord and fellowship with God, and the path to that is by faith in His dear Son, who has given Himself for us. If then that faith in one case is given to a man the satisfaction of that which all men are hungering for, whether they know it or not, and are restless and miserable till they find it. Then there is document and evidence that this gospel, which can do that for the individual, can do it for the race. And so the first fruits are the pledge and the prophecy of the harvest. Man, that's a very eerie word. Prophecy. 
of the harvest. And you know what's weird about the harvest? You know who the reapers are? We actually went into it yesterday. The reapers are the angels. What a harvest. I'm pretty sure the reapers are the angels. Take that with a grain of salt. You look it up. But I'm pretty sure that the reapers are the angels. Maybe some of the, some of the angels or something. Okay. Back to the commentary. What a harvest is dimly hinted at in these words of my text. The first fruits of his creatures that goes even wider than humanity and stretches away out in the dim distances concerning which we can speak with but bated breath. But at least it seems to suggest to us that in accordance with other teaching of the New Testament, the whole creation which groaneth and travaileth together in pain until now will somehow or other be brought into the liberty and the glory of the children of God, and as humble waiters and attenders upon the kings who are the priests of the Most High will participate in the power of the redemption. At all events, there seems to be the gleam dimly through such words as those of my text, the great prospects of a redeemed humanity, of a renewed earth, of a sinless universe in which God and Christ shall be all in all. The possibility and the certainty of that issue lie in this comparatively humble fact that some handful of poor men have found in Jesus Christ that which their finding of it in him manifests to them is the elixir velo and the hope of this world bro this dude this dude this dude put the word elixir in this <laughs> he's used the word smite he's used the word elixir he's used the word consecration bro these are like rbg words it's so funny i mean i i mean i guess it's not funny but it's just so weird it's just, i've never read a commentary that use that type of vocabulary as much you are meant to be specimens ex ex exhibitions of what god intends for mankind and of what the gospel can do for the world do you think christian men and women that anybody looking at you will have a loftier idea of the possibilities of human nature and of the potentialities potentialities i've never read that word before Potent, potent, yeah, potentialities of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because if they will not, then you, they have thwarted your father's design when he sent you by his son. What does that mean right there? I'm kind of confused with that sentence. Like, are, are, are we, are, so when other people view us, are we to somehow just be so different than, I guess, or I don't even know, right? That's just a strange thing. I don't know. I'm confused with that. I just want to finish this off at this point. Lastly, my text suggests that God's purpose for Christians is that they should help the harvest. Okay. Is this the last sentence? I mean, paragraph. That does not lie in the Levitical ceremonial of the sheaf of the first fruits, of course. Though even there, I may remind you that the thing presented on the altar carried in itself the possibilities of future growth and that the wheaten ear has not only bread for the eater, but seed for the sower, and is the parent of another harvest. But the idea that the first fruits are not merely first in series, but that they originate the series of which they are the first, lies in the transference of the terms and the ideas of Jesus Christ. For, as I pointed out to you in my introductory remarks when he is called the first fruits of them that slept awaken O sleeper he didn't write that i just is that that's not a bible verse is it that's from why do I, where did i hear that from where is that from that's from something i don't know what it is but it is implied that he oh you know what that's funny they live Oh, that's so strange, huh? Hmm.
It is implied that that he, by his power, will wake the whole multitude of the sleepers. And when it speaks of him as the firstborn among many brethren, it is implied that he, by the communication of his life, will give life and the fraternal life to the many brethren who will follow him. And so, in like manner, God's purpose in making us a kind of first fruits of his creatures is not merely our consecration and exhibition of a specimen of his power and pledge and pro wait, 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 let me read this again. And so, in like manner, God's purpose in making us the, a kind of first fruits of his creatures is not merely our consecration and exhibition of a specimen of his power and the pledge and prophecy of the harvest, but it is that from us there shall come influences which shall rely which shall realize the harvest of which our own Christianity is the pledge and prophecy. What in the world, bro? That was a very strange paragraph. That is to say all Christian men and women are Christians in order that they make more Christians. Okay, so it's like sowing seeds, okay. The capacity, the obligation, the impulse are all given in the fact of receiving Jesus Christ for ourselves. If we have him, we can preach him. If we have him, we ought to preach him. If we have him in any deep and real possession, we must preach him. And his words will be like a fire in our bones. If we forbear, we shall not be able to stay. Man, that's gnarly. <laughs> it was really gnarly to read. And we're still not... Dude, how long... Here, let me see. How much long... What in the world? Okay, we're almost done. We're almost done. I'm still just utter... This dude's gnarly, bro. What was this? The, is this the McLaren's or the Gills? I think it's, this is the McLaren's. Heaven doth with us as we with torches do, not light them for themselves. What do you get Christ for? To feed upon him, yes, but to carry the bread to all the hungry as well. Do not say you cannot. You can talk about anything that interests you. You can speak about anything that you know, and your lips are to always, are to be always closed about him who has given himself for you? Uh, question mark. Do not say that you need special gifts for it. We do not need sp special gifts for the more public and conspic conspicuous forms of what we call preaching nowadays. But any man and any woman that has Christ in his or her heart can go another way and say, we have found the Messiah, and that is the best thing to say. You ought to preach him. Capacity involves obligation. To him, anything in this world of needy men who are all knit together in the solidarity of one family. To have anything, any anything, implies that you impart it. That is the true compassion of Christianity to to be applied not only to wealth, but to everything, all our possessions, all our knowledge, all our influence. I wonder what every denomination thinks about that. But to everything, all our possessions, all our knowledge, all our influence. What does every believer think about that, right? It just makes me think about, you know, it, it's, it's so strange, right? It just makes me think about the whole aspect of I hear, I've been hearing many, many believers nowadays ago. You know, this, this company, this company, they're doing this, they're promoting this. And then just go, well, why can't we just put a little Bible verse on everything? I mean, you know, in and out does it, right? And I'm, I'm just kind of repeating myself, right? Because if all our possessions are God's and... And we're supposed to give him glory. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, you take that as what you will. But we get them that they may fructify through us all. And if we keep them, we shall be sure to spoil them. The corn laid up in storehouses is gnawed by rats and marred by weevils. If you want it to be healthy and your own possession of it to increase, put it into your seed basket and in the morning sow thy seed. And in the evening withhold not thy hand, and it will come back to thee. Seed for the sower and bread for the eater. Now this is the matter of individual responsibility. You, you cannot get rid of it. 
Every Christian has the obligation laid upon himself, and every Christian man has the sphere in which he can dis discharge it, and in which if he discharge it not, ah, man, charge it not, cowardly Christian men and women who never open your mouths to the soul for thy master's sake, this conviction, that you are thwarting God's purposes, that the blood of your souls lies at your door by reason of your guilty silence. Dude, this dude is brutal. What in the world, bro? That's gnarly to think of. I've never heard of... Man, I'm wondering, like... I'm kind of wondering, what do, what do other believers think about this guy, right? This guy is gnarly. Like, he's really saying, like... The blood of souls lies at the door by reason of your guilty silence. What? I've never heard a pastor say that. Anyway... If you believe these things which I have been saying to you, the application follows. The field is the world, and neither criticisms about missionary methods nor allegations of the superior claims of the little hit of the field around about your own doors are a sufficient vindication before God. Though they may be an excuse before men, the tepid interest in or indifference to or lack of help of any great missionary enterprise. We have to sow beside all waters. And if any men in the world were ever debtors, both to the Greek and to the barbarian, both to the Englishman and the foreigner, it is the members of the great nation of ours, which as a nest hath gathered the riches of the nations. And there were none that peeped or muttered or moved the wing. We are debtors to the heathen world because whether we will or no whether we will or no we come into contact within heathen lands, and whether we take Bibles or not. What in the world? Our countrymen will take rum and gunpowder to the send, send men to the devil if we do not try to draw them to God. What the heck? This guy's a trip. If, <laughs> if we are debtors to them in a thousand cases by injuries inflicted, we are debtors by benefits received, and we are debtors most of all because Christ died for them and for us equally. Oh, huh, man, this guy is just a... Man, this guy really put up some crazy... Okay, so yeah, so... Man, that is just a strange... Huh. You know, it's because, like, you know, Christ died for the sins of the world, so are we to... Oh, man, that's not what I think about now. This guy really... Man, that was a real... And I, there's one more little sentence. And so I beseech you, give us your help, and remember in giving it that God of his own will hath begotten us by the wor world truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. And I think that was the longest commentary on this one. That one was really, really brutal. I just, I'm, I'm wondering, like, what do other people think about that commentary? Right? That was a very, very long commentary. Like, I'm wondering, do what do other believers think about that? What did we just read? Right? Because there's no thing where I can click on it and be like, okay, well, this is what the public thinks about this. This is what every denomination thinks about this commentary. What, what does everybody, what do you as a believer think about this commentary, right? In, in my own terms, I, I know that was probably written way long ago. I think what's strange is that, I think what jumped out at me on that commentary is just these words that I've never heard a single pastor really even use in, a, in, a, in any sermon. It's so strange listening to some of these old commentaries and, it's, and he's words that were like, it's, it, I think the weirdest part is he used words that I've seen many times and I didn't even really know what they meant. And I think that was what was weird about it. And that was an hour and 13 minutes, bro. Oh my goodness, dude. That was a... I don't know if anybody's even going to listen to that, but... That was brutal. That was really, really brutal. I, 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 was, like a, I was not expecting to read that today. <laughs> I was not expecting that one today, man. That was just... Can you, like, man, it'd just be so interesting. Imagine if, like, 
you were to hear the minds of every believer and just be like, okay, we're reading James 1.18 today. What do you guys think about this? And then you just see this dude and he's just going off. Just like boom, boom, boom. He just did like a like a 7,000 combo point uh, link right there. You'd be like, what in the world, bro? Like this dude is on one. <laughs> this, dude's, this dude's a trip, man. <laughs> Oh, man. McLaren, you, you, that was a trip, man. I'll give you that, dude. I'll, I know he's probably dead or something, but man, that was a trip to read. <laughs> that was gnarly, man. That was really, really gnarly. I ain't even gonna lie, that was, that was a gnarly one. I was not expecting that. I was kind of like, and that's just the weirdest part, right? It's like, Finding the combos, man, it's interesting. He found a lot of combos that I was not, I did not even, close to even thinking about. All right, let's see what we draw today. What is the cards gonna be for today? We're a little, we're a little late, so I'm gonna try and speed this up. It's okay though. Oops. Okay, come on, let's see. What are we gonna try? And I have the, I do have that seat on, so we're gonna try to do that upside down tail up thing. Upside down stick me tail up things today. And I'm just curious, what do other believers think about that? Right? They should open it up to like having comments from the public on the commentaries, right? Commentaries of the commentaries. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Let's cut this. Cut, 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 cut. Let's open up our Insta. This will be on the Insta one. Okay, let's see here. Welcome, travelers. Welcome to the cheesy card draw of the day, but we get to see some artwork, right? First card. Oh my goodness, we got a forest. It's been strange, I ain't gonna lie. We've been drawing a lot of forests lately. I do like that one. I like this, like, this, this, like, little grove area. Interesting. Who did this one? Jim Nelson. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's see here. Okay, we got this was the first, oh yeah, I didn't show it. The first card of the day, forest. I guess it kind of makes sense. I mean, if we can think about plants and stuff, we were talking about plants growing and stuff like that. We got planes. Hopefully I've shuffled this correctly or enough. Oh, wow. Very, very funny. <laughs> oh my goodness, we drew this card today after that long commentary. Tireless missionaries. I ain't gonna lie, that commentary almost just reminds me of this card. Bro. Number three, ooh, Cradle Vitality. It's funny, my Christian friend gave me this card on my birthday. Cradle of Vitality. Wait, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, all right. Ethereal Armor. I ain't gonna lie, I love the art on this one. Sometimes when I, why I put this one in there is sometimes it reminds me of like the Armor of God, right? I will say it's kind of hard to draw the armor of God like ethereal like But maybe I, I'd like to imagine you know like the armor of God that even like the drawing I did last night, right? And it's kind of like this right? It's like ethereal like you know like 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 spirit armor so all right, and that's like like ethereal armor 
Ooh, another forest. Okay, okay. Seven. Ooh, angelic page. Intriguing. Angelic page. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Last card. Ooh, curse break. We got curse break. Curse break. Okay, let me put this hand up on the on the insta. Okay, so we got a forest, we got tireless missionaries, we got cradle of vitality, we got ethereal armor, we got a forest, we got angelic page, we got curse break. This is the hand for the day. Forest, Plains, Tireless Missionaries, Cradle of Vitality, Ethereal Armor, Forest, Angelic Page, and Curse Break. Actually, I think he did this uh, artwork with colored pencil, which is actually very interesting, huh? Curse Break, who did it? Uh, Sam Wolf Con Connolly. I also really like this card right here, Ethereal Armor. Dude, that one's cool. I like just like the, just imagine that ethereal armor, man. It's like spirit armor or something. Have a good one, everybody. Try your best. Have fun. Okay. Man, that was a lot of uh, things to do. Okay, I'm gonna take a little break. Check this coffee.
<laughs> Holy moly, did that just happen? <laughs> did we really just read that comment? Oh man, that was brutal. I'm gonna keep saying that, sorry. That was just really weird. That was just very strange. Very strange content. Okay, let's get into uh oh, let's get into riding. Okay, we're gonna try and uh do the combo before my bike broke yesterday. I tried to fix it on the stream I did. Um, we have the plastic seat on right here. As you can tell, I've i I've, I've done this trick so many times, look at I bent the seat post. <laughs> Well, we're going to try and do the upside down tail line. And I actually am going to try and maybe uh, film this one as well. We're going to try and add an uh, upside down uh, no hander thing. Let me get some music on. I did find some new uh, copyright free music. That's a little hard to find, but it's fun. It's actually kind of like finding like a hidden gem. You're like, oh, this one's copyright free. We get to listen to it. For some reason, like the first song, they're like recycling the uh, another free song, and then they like goes into a whole bunch of new songs or something. Oh. Let's check the PSI. Hopefully, my stream doesn't abruptly end. Oh yeah, let me put this uh, phone up on here. Because we're going to film this just in case I land it. Because I've actually never landed this combo we're going to be attempting. So what we're attempting is we're going to go for uh, stick B. Stick B, no hander. Or actually it's an endo, endo, endo to stick B, no hander. To dump truck. To drop down, uh, drop down, upside down, no hander. To upside down tail whip to uh, to stick B no hander hopefully bar spin to land do 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 one we're using the plastic seat it's about to break it's already cracking if you look I cracked it right there it's already cracking so we're gonna run it until it just breaks and now I'm gonna have to get another one another uh, beater seat all right let's see how this goes we were practicing yesterday before my bike broke well my snap keep a snap Just 
This is a new song. I haven't listened to one yet. That first song, that first song is actually used in uh, many playlists, copyright-free playlists for some reason. And I guess it's cool. Dinner right there. I don't think we're gonna do the bar spin. We're not gonna do the bar spin because I'm gonna mess it up, I think. Messing up my scuff just a little bit. Oh my goodness. I don't like the drum and bass of like the computers. I'm so close, kind of.
Dude, I almost landed like a second try. That was crazy. My my seat post is gonna snap in half, dude. Look at that. Oh, what am I doing? I did the wrong thing. I got confused. I kind of like skipped ahead. Switch it up, we'll try a couple quads, quad uh, fire hydrants. messing up his tail whip.
goodness. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to break my leg. This is going to take a while. I've landed one of them, right? I just haven't landed this all of them together. I think I kind of did. I landed one where I like just went straight into it without like the no hander, right? So that's kind of why we're trying to do the no hander one. It's fun. I'm just trying not to get frustrated, all right? Seat's just getting so big. Bro, it's like I've already been at my seat post a lot. Because, like, I remember, like, I pushed my seat back, like, there, and now it's already there again. Holy moly. I'm going to customize seat post made for this thing. I'm at an angle. If I go on this angle or this angle, it just doesn't work. I gotta like put it right on the front. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna land this today, man. This is gonna be kind of an excursion. I can kind of feel it already. This is kind of maybe why I gave up on this trick. I'm just, it's not consistent as much as I, I know what.
Gotta endure through it, right? It's not that bad. It's just hard. I think it's hard. I got into it like that second try, right? And now I can't get back into it. I just gotta put my weight more. I need to balance my weight out more when I get into it. side like that I wonder if it's just where my seat's been I think it up there because look my seat's all bent to this one side I wonder if that's affecting it That's 20 minutes of trying it right there. Let's see that one I almost landed. Oh my goodness, that was a little bit. Delete this one. Okay, let's see here. My storage is full. Select, delete, delete all. Let's try it again. Try something else actually. I don't know if this combo's going down, man.
I'm going to notice my seat. I'd like to think it's not my seat, but look at how bent it is. <laughs> look at how bent the seat post is. It's probably affecting me some way, right? The seat should be out there. Maybe that's why it's messing me up. change it up. I think I'm going to get frustrated. I don't want to get frustrated on this trick, so we're going to move on. Oh, I wanted to really land it though. I'll give two more attempts. Go get all three. Uh, this one's starting to get me. It's that, it's that put down part. I keep messing it up. In the tail of Two good, two good attempts. I'm not going to have that one. Maybe I shouldn't give up on it. Now it's the tail whip that's getting me, right? Gotta have the fun. We need to have the fun in the grind. Just really want to land it. <laughs> oh. Three, two, one. Sweet. 
a little, a little tricky. You gotta kind of like rock your weight a little bit. I kind of, that's the other thing is I kind of like stopped a little bit too long, right? I kind of want to do everything all like float out, but Uh, let's try a couple times. I keep saying trying a couple more times, huh? That's the other thing is I kind of want to like do the no hander and then drop it. I was kind of like angled that way, right? That was fun. That was fun, even though it's kind of frustrating. It's fun. trying it because this is kind of like one of those tricks kind of like the fire hydrant where I feel like I should just keep trying it or should I put this aside and work on some other stuff right the other thing why I'm also trying it a lot more is because I have to change my seat out to do this trick and I'm basically messing up that seat post and the seat I just want to make sure I time it. I think if I time it and I'm not in the right area, I'm just not going to do it. If I'm in that, if I'm not in that right, uh, that angle, because I want the angle where you can see like, no, like you can't get, get the no hander down, right? Because I was like, so I like angle it over here. So I, that means I dropped it down a little ahead. I dropped it down like right here. I need to like go right here and then drop it down. do at that time I think I like tried to get into the sticky too fast I need okay that's what I gotta do I gotta like grab the peg make sure I have like a firm grip on like lift it up and then switch my hands off that time I like I like tried to it just didn't work I gotta like like freaking lift that thing up
I wonder if I just keep trying it all day. Hold on. Man. So this middle part's hard and then the landing's gonna be hard. I need to make sure that like, on the landing I just gotta be really chill. I don't need to force it. Well, I kinda have to pull. It's like a mixture of being chill and forcing it. So good, bro. Mess this up. It's fun though. <laughs> Probably didn't seem that fun, but it's definitely challenging. It is a challenge. It's like leveling up. It's like we're going on a gnarly boss fight or something. I guess it's not a boss fight, it's more like a it's more like grinding for a level. Trying to get an ability unlocked or something. Like, I think I'm just panicking. I think I know what's going on. I need to just hold the stick be a little bit longer. I just like start panicking. I'm like, I'm gonna land, I'm gonna land it. Because that, that's, I gotta do the stick and then do another no hander. Now we're gonna land it. Okay. Will it be done today? I don't know. But it's fun. It's hard. I wonder if my crank's in the right position. Let me make sure my crank's in the right position. So many steps I have to do and that middle part is the hard part, right? It's kind of like, it almost feels a little defeating like when you've done the first part so many times, but then the middle part and the end part are the hardest parts and you can't even get to that point. I think I'm gonna 
move on. We grinded a good amount on this trick, right? Yeah, I'm so close. Should I just move on or just should I keep going? I don't know, man. We got into the dump trick, bro. We were about to land it. We did do some damage. I think we bent the I think we bent the seat post a little bit more. <laughs> Alright, let's take out this is the upside down tail up seat. Upside down, tail up seat. I'm surprised it's still intact. It's like cracked and stuff, it's still going. Holy moly, bro. This thing's about to snap. I'm surprised this thing isn't cracked. It's gnarly. It's like I have one of those, it looks like, it, it looks like one of those like old school seat posts that are all bent, right? But it's just like, this is Matt, this is the, the bend of the upside down tail. I don't know seat post is. Upside down tail up seat. Man, I wonder if I messed up my like two or something. I didn't bend this thing on the frame. tried. I know that comp is going to take a while. I just got to get that right one. I just have to have the energy to do it. Sometimes like when you do something over and over and over again, it's just like you kind of just start losing ste steam. Okay. okay, we just have some fun now. How long is that? That was 10 minutes. So we worked on that one for 40 minutes. I think 40 minutes, no, no prevail. So it's probably, I should just start counting how long some of these combos take, huh? So we probably worked 40 minutes yesterday. So it was probably about, we're probably like an hour. I'm wondering, that'd be so cool to have like a ticker. This is try 300 or something. Let us see here. That was like the max. That was like the max rep for me right there. <laughs> I couldn't get past it, man. I had to, I had to move on. My stream isn't still on. Is it shut off already? Oh, it's still on. Try 
try the bar spin. Let's try the bar spin one. Let's try the pickup bar to... The, we'll try this other combo we've been trying. The um, pickup bar, pickup bar, switch X up to like Ryan Nyquist bars or whatever it's called. Okay. Oh wait, wait, are we gonna film this one? Yeah, let's film it, I guess. Pick up bar, switch X up, uh, bar spin no hand. Right? Oh, I almost got first tee. I think I need to go a little bit more on this angle. This one I can only do a little bit of amount, otherwise my my, th my legs get like scratched up or something.
I should have already landed this one. I feel like a lot of people would have landed this one really soon. I'm not good at bar spins though, so. And I made a week on him. gonna happen so that what ends up happening is I either do a bar spin and a bar spin and a half or I do a bar spin if I do a bar spin and a half I'm gonna get into the half bar generator if not I'm gonna go into the endo into a generator So sporadic. I need to like chill out at the end of it, huh? Okay, so we're gonna do that. Into the briefcase or into the half bar. Half bar and then a briefcase bar. And then the executive boomerang. Like people do this like in the air, they'll like land like that. Can't even imagine landing like that as smartly. Surprised I'm actually still going. Normally I give up on this trip pretty fast. Do 
the same thing now. Oh, come on, so I keep pressing my front brake. this hard. Almost landed one, right? <laughs> that looks so crazy, actually. <laughs> it just looks sporadic. I guess we could try another quad fire hydrant. Try that. Let's, call, let's try a quad fire hydrant. Two hours, 24 minutes. Squeaker backwards, uh, hang ten, hang still hang ten. I tried the quad earlier. I think I'm just not committing. Even like 
addition of stuff on the edema. Yeah, they're really swollen. Huh? They're really swollen, and I, I, I have, I had my lights popped up. Above your heart rate? Above my heart? Yeah. yeah. And it's still in it now. You might be drinking too many liquids. You need to look it up. Edema. Two, three, I haven't landed a single thing. No worries. It's okay. There's been many days like this. We get prepared for them. <laughs> oh, man. What am I gonna do? I can't. Well, I don't even know if I'm gonna land anything. Hmm. I guess we could just do a decade and have that as a thumbnail, huh? <laughs> Let's just do a, a fire hydrant a decade. That's always like a good little uh, thumbnail, right? You get a fire hydrant. Okay. Fire hydrant decade. This is just for the thumbnail. If I end up landing it, then maybe we'll go into a line or something.
<laughs> this should be easy. Even I, I still have a little bit of trouble with this trick. Actually, made a little bit more, a little bit of trouble. I just gotta like, you just gotta time everything right. I can't even land this today. Come on. Are you kidding me? That's okay. You gotta grind for this one, I guess. People say that this is an easy trick, so. <laughs> okay, I guess that was the thumbnail. That was probably the only thing I'm gonna land today. I kinda wanna do that smoother. That was really sketchy, huh? See, we do it better. That was the first one we landed today. Let's see if we get a good one. People find it really easy, but for me, it's, it's kind of tricky actually. You just gotta get everything right, just the right placement. It's all about placement. But for some reason, if you just get it wrong, like your weight position, 
You can't get that torque to get over it. I'm thinking if you had a smaller frame, it'd be, it'd be easier, I think. It's like if you angle it, like your weight kind of have to be like right on your bike. It's a little weird. It's crazy because I see this, this, uh, this trick right here. Like a lot of pros just do it in and out. All sorts of do it like it's nothing. Stuck on it, right? I could do it, it's just I'm not every time. <laughs> you know, it's probably actually my brakes. You know what? I think I need to adjust them a little bit. A little bit more adjustment. Sketchy, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. <clears throat> I landed the fire hydrant dickhead, but then, like, I didn't know what I was doing. Oh, well, that one was actually kind of clean. I think I just needed to adjust my brakes a little bit. I'm wondering if that's what other pros do. I guess what some of the pros do, they like adjust their brakes or certain tricks or something. We'll leave it on a Bible verse, and uh, I feel like I could have done better today. Uh, should have maybe just did that one combo, huh? <laughs> That's okay. We tried. It was hard. We gave it a go, okay? But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unpleasable, un oh, unappeasable, slanders without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid such people. For among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led astray by various passions. 
always learning and never able to arrive at the knowledge of the truth. Intriguing. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. They will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into mists. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. So now I gotta get some proverbs. Make no friendship with a man given to anger, nor go with wrathful man, lest you learn his ways and entangle yourself in a snare. Huh. Be careful of anger. I think the big one I've been trying to learn, I guess, in these past many months, actually, is just the level of frustration and the anger, right? That's the big one. That's the big one for me at the moment. Frustration and the anger. Anyway, looks like we out of here. I might do a drawing stream later. I might not. Farewell, everybody. Try your best and have fun. Farewell, farewell.